Hi there, hope everyone's well. I um, just want to do a video on Project Himalayan. Uh, essentially, I've had this white Himalayan for a couple of years now. I bought it in 2019 um, to do a ride back from Bulgaria. I'd had the first Himalayan, the black one, which I'd done sort of 19,000 miles in nine months on across America and lots of lands, then John Groats trips. Uh, sold that bike um, and then needed a bike to guide a group from Bulgaria back to England. Uh, I just needed another bike quickly, so I thought, well, uh, I like the first Himalayas, so I bought the second one. So this bike was used for that, and then I used it last year uh, on the A2 fleet for people to ride. And then it's been sat up, it's just had a few issues with head bearings, it, it got notchy, uh, it's got a bent handle bar from when it fell off its stand, broken gear lever, uh, brake lever. Uh, and it's just a bit, it's a bit neglected. So I thought, uh, whilst I'm reconditioning it and bringing it back up to scratch, I'd do a few changes. So uh, I did do a video back early in the later part of last year. So. I've got the tech cam uh, to fit, to still to install, this is going to give what they claim is five brake horsepower. Now I rode, the, I rode a Himalayan with the tech cam fitted in Scotland, uh, and where I noticed the power gain was more at the top end, so you actually got some roll on power, 4,000 RPM, up to 6,000, so it allowed you to overtake traffic, whereas otherwise I don't think you could. So is there a noticeable difference if you're just pottering around the lanes? I don't think so. If you crank it open and, and ride the bike more aggressively, I think that's where you feel the benefit of the uh, tech cam. So I'm going to fit that first job. So we're going to, that's, that's our performance gain, tech cam. I'm not going to bother with an aftermarket exhaust. I, I don't feel the benefit here. I, think that, I don't like the noise that the aftermarket exhaust make. I like the standard exhaust no, no, uh, note. Uh, they don't damage very easy, so I'll leave that alone. I'm not going to bother with any of the other stuff, um, or the air deletion kits and all that. I'm just going to stick with that and see how that goes. Where I want to see if I can improve the bike uh, off-road is in suspension travelling clearance, because obviously one of the limitations of the bike is that because it was designed to have a low seat height, it's obviously meant that it's got uh, a reduced amount of ground clearance, which means when you're tackling choppy and stuff, it tends to ground out, and probably worse than that, the foot pegs sit very low. So to give to give a low seat height but still space in the leg, the foot pegs are mounted low to keep that space. It means that when you're riding in a rut, it, the foot pegs gouge into the rut, make it very difficult to ride. And I'm not even talking deep ruts, because as soon as the suspension, the softish suspension starts compressing over undulations, then obviously it reduces the peg height even further, and even a shallow rut, you're gonna catch it. So, uh, thanks to Ian and Jack over at Cooper who have kindly sent me uh, this kit to try. So fork extension uh, caps. Let me see, see if you can see these better. So they screw in top of the into the top of the fork leg. I don't think they'd make any difference to the preload, but essentially they give it uh, allow a longer fork to give extra to raise it up at the front. So that's quite a simple solution there. Obviously I'll put some new four coil in, maybe a bit stiffer, uh, more, a bit thicker uh, four coil uh, when we redo that. And then at the rear, just got a, that again, a sexy new fully adjustable shock, which should extend the ride out, I think by about 20 mil. So not a huge amount, but uh, again, I rode, I rode a bike with the Haven shock fitted and the caps in at Sweet Lab at the Himalayan Odyssey two years ago, a year ago, and it did make a noticeable difference. It kept the bike off the ground, kept, it just kept the weight up because it, it didn't, it wasn't as soft, uh, and also just gave you a bit, an extra inch or so on the foot, clip, foot peg clearance. So uh, at Sweet Lamb there were obstacles to go over, where at the top of, the bike had grind, grind out in stock form, but with the suspension lift, kept it off the deck. So there's going to be some definite improvement there. So it's just going to give me a bit more control, a bit more ground clearance, and therefore a bit more speed and commitment off-road. So we're going to see how that goes. I mean, this is not to say that the suspension on the Himalayan's back is actually, th I think, out of all the stock A2 compliant adventure bikes, it's probably as good as, or better than, than any. The KTM 390 is very good, but something like the CRF 300 or the BMW 310 GS, they're very soft under sprung and they're difficult to get a move on because there's just not enough tuning in the suspension. Uh, so for me, the Royal Enfield did a great job with this, matched only by KTM with the 390 Adventure. But where you want that extra push on, uh, off, certainly off-road, I think I'm going to get a bit of benefit with the old Hagen shock. So get that fitted. And then in terms of anything else, I'm, I'm not a big accessories fan generally. generally I'm, I'm probably like the accessory seller's worst, worst dream in a sense because 
I think most of the things you can fit to a bike make it worse or certainly don't improve it. I'm not a big believer in the engine guards, for example, because to me that all that it does is increase weight and width, which is not what you want off-road. Uh, and on a Himalayan, on most trail bikes, most bikes that are slender, uh, when they go over, they go on these, or they go on foot pace. The engine guards does something, but you, you know, you're gonna be very lucky to get something on there. I have got the upgraded sun guard. I have to check the name of that company because off the top of my head, but I forgot. But that's a, a stainless steel, very heavy duty bash plate, which I think will take a good pummeling. Um, the standard one can get dented quite easily. Uh, so that's so rather than engine guards, a sturdy sun, sun guard is probably better. Bar buster for hand guards to save you bending or breaking the levers. And then other than that, all I was going to do is put some Cooper's aftermarket. Uh, handlebars on which came from the, that maintain the same sort of swoop but only 35 pounds and brace because these are very soft. Uh, the Himalaya in this one in particular because it's a Euro 4 bike stands very upright so a few times uh, it's fell over off a stand uh, and the damage is always a bent bar so a set of bars that will just remedy that uh, for when I'm off-roading obviously going to drop it will be the next game but other than that Pretty much it, I'm not going to bother, I like these, these are good crash protection in themselves. I'm not going to change the foot pegs, I'm not going to do anything, I'll probably leave the, uh, the framework on at the back. You know, the beauty of the Himalayan is it's a good stock bike, it doesn't need anything really, it's doing to it. But the extra gain of the performance of the tech cam, I'm keen to try that, get a bit more excitement, and allow me to just push on when I need to, when I get past that, when I, when I want to get past that car or that second car. I remember in Scotland riding Mike's bike, he got the tech cam fitted. I did a four car overtake in one go, which on a stock, stock Himalayan is probably unheard of. Uh, and then the suspension, again, it's just going to allow it to be a bit more aggressive off road uh, and not have to worry about the feet catching. Because I think there's a real there's a risk with the Himalayan if you start riding fast that you start going to get, you're going to get some crush injuries or some twist injuries on your ankles or on your feet because the, the feet are so low to the ground. Uh, so hopefully that will improve that. That's it, the project came away. Um, let's hope I can get this fitted next week or, or, or thereabouts because that tech cam has been in, in, in the garage for about five months now. I uh, just want to show you, this is, this is the damage that a, a fallen Himalayan, that one in question, did to my uh, Euro 5 310GS. Uh, stood upright, toppled against it because I just caught it and it sits that upright. Went straight down, cut the nose clean off. Thankfully missing the LED headlight, uh, but that's on order. Uh, to 40 pounds for the plastic and 250 pound plus VAT for the paint. So if anybody knows a good paint supplier, let me know. Uh, so that's it. Project Himalayan, looking forward to getting this bike back on the road. I've always liked the simplicity of the white Himalayan. I think it looks right, looks nice, stylish, basic, functional. In terms of tires, just while I'm on, uh, I'm entered in the Exmoor uh, Forest Ride TRF organized ride in mid-April and they stipulate a trail tire which is difficult to get in a 17 inch format so I need to check see whether they will take these um, I think it's a hide now I've got on the back hide now uh, K60 yeah it's hide now K60 and I've got a Midas EO7 on the front which to me are a really semi knobbly they're not great in really wet mud they're not as good as an EO9 Midas or a TKC80 they're sort of a hybrid tire uh, so hopefully they will pass scrutineering if not I might even have to go back to stock tyre on the back because it's the one on the back they're worried about churning up the ground. So maybe um, a Seat tyre on the back and then an EO9 on the front for a bit more grip. But the beauty of the Himalayan is it gets a lots of natural rear end traction. Uh, just that long stroke motor gathers traction where other bikes would spin up and lose your traction. So the natural engine uh, delivery uh, and everything else goes really well for this bike off-road. Also, just show you my new mule. We had that done live by uh, Stephen Hill uh, over when we were down at Excel with a stand. Uh, he did that as a live painting, then we brought it back uh, in piece in board format and then uh, nailed it to the wall. So, yeah, that's nice. If anybody wants to come and see that, yeah, got uh, an open day down here, second of April. Give us a shout. So that's it, Project Himalayan. I'll, I'll hopefully when we get around to fitting it, we'll just get it. We'll do it all in a day and uh, show you what we're doing. <laughs> See if we're doing it right. There'll be people always tell, there's always people who tell you you're doing it wrong, but we'll give it a good shot. All right, cheers.